All right, now one of the big questions that I get asked whenever Dreamweaver comes up in conversation or whenever I'm teaching a class is, do I need to learn HTML? Do I need to know HTML in order to work with Dreamweaver? And I've got a short answer for you and a long answer. The short answer is no, so that's a sigh of relief for you, <laughs> for some of you anyway. And the long answer is yes. <laughs> so, so you may still be feeling massive amounts of anxiety, I don't know. But here's why I say yes and no. If your work with Dreamweaver, if you're only going to be doing a very small amount, sometimes people say to me, you know, Jeff, all I'm going to be doing is, you know, making some minor text changes, changing images on a web page, this kind of thing. Really, I'm an accountant and they want me to be doing this stuff. If that's your situation, if it's like 5 or 10% of your job, I would not worry about it. But if this is something that you really want to dig into and really go further with Dreamweaver and web design, then I would definitely recommend at least a fundamental understanding of HTML. And what we talk about over the next few minutes is definitely going to give you as much as you're going to need to get started. So I'm definitely going to boil things down and use very simple language here for you and really kind of lay it out for you. And you know, I got to say this as well. It's not as hard as you think it is. A lot of people, you know, myself included, when I first got into this, I thought this was like brain surgery. It's unbelievably simple. I think you're going to be shocked at how easy it is. So I'm definitely going to try and break down some barriers here for you and sort of destroy some obstacles. So let's get started here. HTML fundamentals. Here we go. Okay, now what better place to begin than to ask the question, what is HTML? What is hypertext markup language? Well, said simply, it's the background code that's going to handle or control all of your pages structure, all the building blocks for your layouts. You could think of it as the skeletal structure of your page, if that works for you. It's static, it's fixed, it's plain, dare I say, it's boring, it's lame, it's limited. There really isn't a whole lot to it, I gotta be honest. Now, the other thing I want to discuss here quickly, too, is that HTML, when it was first built, it was only intended to do two things. Number one, structure your pages, as I just mentioned. And number two, connect your pages together via hyperlinks. That's it. So structure and hyperlinks. So notice in there, no formatting, no design, no iPhones, no Facebook, none of that stuff. It's just structure and hyperlinks. That's it. In fact, I got to stress here, HTML is absolutely not a design tool. It was never built to design anything at all. Next up, what you need to know about HTML is it's comprised of just two components, two pieces. Forget about everything that you've heard about HTML and the chaos involved in HTML. Forget about all that stuff. Let's start all over again. Elements and attributes. What's the difference between the two? Well, an element, very simply, is an object that sits on your page. An object like an image or a video clip, or some text, or a heading, or a menu, or whatever you got. Any of those objects that sit on your page, they're elements, okay? Now stay with me here because an attribute, very simply, is a further description of an element. That's all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So before we get to attributes, let's talk elements, and then we'll see sort of where we wind up here. So let's talk elements. So as I said just a second ago, Text, photographs, flash video, cartoons, header graphics, layout objects that you have, all of these bits and pieces are all elements. That's how it works. And most elements have what we call an opening tag and a closing tag. So I've given you a really simple example here using an older tag, which isn't really used anymore, but it's a great example of how simple all this is. I've got a sentence here. I hope you're enjoying this lesson. <laughs> and the word your, I've got surrounded by B tags, bold, right? So the B, the bold, has to start in a very specific spot and then we would have some content that the element would hold, in this case, some text. And then somewhere else, later on, that element has to close or it has to end. At the bottom of the screen there, you can see how this sentence would actually look inside a web browser. The word your would appear in bold. And that's how it works. So it might be, for example, a menu. Well, the menu would have a definite starting point and a definite ending point. Or here's something a little bit more real world. 
we would have a table. A table would have a very specific starting point and a very specific ending point. And the closing tag, by the way, is exactly the same as the opening tag. The only difference is it's preceded by a forward slash. That's it. It's really simple, straightforward stuff. So, you know, think of elements as building blocks for your page. Whatever metaphor you want to use is perfectly fine. You could think of Lego bricks if you want or building blocks, whatever metaphor works for you, it all boils down to these elements being individual units or blocks for your page. So use whatever metaphor makes sense to you, I suppose. I use the metaphor of cardboard boxes. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of silly, but follow me here. So think of a cardboard box. I have a cardboard box on my page that represents a paragraph. And I might have another cardboard box that represents a table. And I might have another box that represents a graphic or IMG, which is code for an image, right? Now I'm going to use the example of a table here. So I decide I want to have a table on my page. And this is where things start getting a little bit more interesting. What you need to know about HTML as well is it's all about putting elements inside other elements or think of cardboard boxes inside other cardboard boxes or containers inside other containers or you know sometimes in class I'll make a joke I'll say you know HTML is kind of like IKEA furniture it's all modular it all fits with everything else right so different pieces can fit with other things in a manner of speaking right so let's kind of explore this here let's say for example that I want to create a table on my page well inside my table I'd actually have another element or in my example here I want two more elements called TR now what the heck is TR TR is code for a table row I want two rows inside my table so I've got to put two table row cardboard boxes inside my table cardboard box if that makes sense and then if I want to go even further maybe I want to put cells inside each of my rows so then I'd have to have TD boxes. Now TD is geek speak or code speak for what you and I would call a table cell. It's just a table cell. It's called a TD though. So the TDs go inside the TRs. The TRs go inside the table. I hope that makes sense. It's all about boxes inside boxes inside boxes inside boxes. Sometimes people say, you mean this is like Russian dolls, like little dolls inside a larger doll inside a larger doll? Yeah, exactly the same idea. So anyway, whatever metaphor works for you, I hope this is happening for you. Now, how would this look inside code? Well, here's the same graphical representation, but now we have some code. And this is would be the actual code for coding out a table inside Dreamweaver or for our web page. Now, let me kind of break it down here for you. First of all, we have the innermost containers or boxes, our TDs or our cells. There they are selected for you there. I've highlighted them there for you. The next box out or the next container out would be our table rows, right? And then the final outermost box would be the table itself. So in other words, all these boxes get dropped inside larger boxes. I hope that's working for you. And once I've dropped all my boxes inside the other boxes, I tape the lid shut, something like this. And then I take that box, that table, and I start putting it among other cardboard boxes like images and paragraphs and headings and divs and other tables and so on and so on and next thing i know i've got an entire page layout that's how it works so there's my overall page for example so really it's all about boxes inside boxes so if you can wrap your head around the concept of boxes inside boxes then you're going to do just fine with html and the reason why i use a table as my example is because it's probably one of the more complex page objects that requires a lot of boxes inside boxes so if you can wrap your head around that then the rest of html honestly is going to be nothing so you may want to rewind this video and watch it again if you like if you're still not really getting it but that's really the idea here it's really all about boxes inside boxes so all right you've got that down now let's talk about attributes and remember attributes are our second component of html and don't forget that an attribute very simply is a further description of an element
Now, I'm going to use my example of the table here. We'll continue with tables. So don't forget, this was the original code for the table, right? The table had a definite starting point and a definite ending point. Now, what if I want to further describe my table? How? Well, maybe I decide I want to put a little bit of width on my table. I decide I want my table to be 500 pixels in width. So check out the code down at the bottom there. I have open angle bracket, table, space, width equals, and then in quotes, some kind of a value, whatever kind of value you want. And then the opening tag ends, and then I have my closing tag. So attributes always appear inside an element's opening tag. Sometimes people say, do I need to repeat the attribute down in the closing tag? No, exactly like I have here is all you need. It's going to do you just fine there. So what else could I do with my table? So I've got the width there. What else could I do? Well, maybe I decide I want the height to be 350 pixels, something like this. So now I've got two attributes inside my opening table tag. And all I did after the 500 and then the closing quote on the 500 there for the width, I put in a space and then I typed in height equals. So you can throw in as many attributes as you want. So now I have a background color of green. I can throw in as many as I want, so long as they're all separated by a single space, it's no problem. And you know, I should mention as well that the order in which you put these attributes doesn't really matter. I could start with the background color and then go height and then go width or whatever the heck I want. It doesn't really matter, so long as they're all separated by a single space. Now, sometimes, again, people will say, do you mean attributes are like formatting for your elements? Sure, if you want to use that analogy or that example or, or that line of thinking, that's perfectly fine. So now I'm formatting my element. I don't have just a regular old table. Now I've got a table with a specific width, height, and color on it. And you know, I should mention as well that each element in HTML has a very specific set of attributes. So in other words, We've been talking about attributes for our table element, but what I could do to even further describe or further format my table is I could throw in some attributes for my table rows if I wanted to, or I could throw in some attributes for my table cells. So as you can imagine, the code for my table is really going to start getting lengthy and pile that on top of attributes that I've set up not only for my original table, but also for my graphics, also for my paragraphs, also for my other tables and divs and headings and all sorts of stuff. And next thing you know, you've got a massive amount of code there.